know, I tried to look like Leanne says and crimp my hair and she looks like a beautiful mermaid goddess and I look like a backup dancer in a Paula Abdul video. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. Guys, today is election day. Today is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. You know, I'm feeling a lot of anxiety. I'm sure a lot of you are. And by the time I upload this video, we will probably know who the president is, which really, wow, <laughs> wow. So I thought, what better way to calm my nerves than by talking about a bunch of products that I loved and a few that I hated, because let's be honest, sometimes it's more fun to talk about things you don't like. If you wanna learn more about your skin type, how to handle your acne, makeup, mental health, self-care, Lots of stuff. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you. All right, so let's talk about a favorite first. We are talking about the Aveeno Calm and Restore for Sensitive Skin Oat Gel Moisturizer. I'll go ahead and insert some clips of me using this and um, I'll also link the video up above that I did on this product, uh, comparing it to the Neutrogena Unscented Hydro Boost. Honestly, guys, I might like this more than the Hydro Boost. I really can't decide. I think what I'm gonna do is use the Hydro Boost in the summer months when I need like a really nice burst of moisture on my skin before I go in with my SPF or at night. But when I'm looking for something to really calm down my skin or if I'm feeling dry and irritated, which I have been the past few weeks with the weather change, this has been my go-to product. It's just got such a nice gel consistency, but it feels a slight bit thicker than the Hydro Boost. It's just very calming. It has absolutely no smell, and I just really, really like it. If you are on tretinoin and you have oily skin, even dry skin, you might like this. I would say that you may need something a little bit thicker um, for your overall moisturizer, but I like to use this in the morning under my SPF. I think it does an amazing job. There are a million ways you can use this. I've had a few people ask me if this was pilling under makeup or if it was suitable to use underneath products layering. Absolutely yes, I've used toners under this. I've used SPF and moisturizers on top of it with absolutely no problem. Really, really love this and I highly recommend it. Also quickly wanted to plug my TikTok account. It's just at Rudy Berry and I recently had a TikTok go viral which was an interesting experience. And then I woke up the next morning and I had 10,000 followers. Let me tell you something, TikTok is very different than YouTube. It took me 10 seconds to make that TikTok and I got 10,000 followers. I've been working on YouTube for about six months, so you do the math. Don't tell TikTok, but I like YouTube more. YouTube is my, my main jam. She's my main girl and TikTok's just the side chick, to be honest with you. Okay, another uh, favorite of this month, and if you want this, you need to get on it ASAP. That is the Glossier Balm.com in the new Wild Fig scent. I am gonna put in a TikTok here uh, that I did kind of swatching this so you guys can see it, but the new uh, Balm.com is limited edition, which I thought was really strange because typically when they make new ones, they're forever. I've never even seen them do a limited edition one, so I was really curious about that, but this is incredible. It's the best smell that they've made so far, to be honest with you. It's in between a fruity scent and a floral scent. It is a beautiful, like, hmm, coral color that would be perfect on all skin tones and all lip shades because it's just dark enough that if you have really pigmented lips or if you have, like, brown lips, it's just going to give you, like, a slight tint of pink. And if you have less pigmented lips, it's going to give you, like, a little pop of coral. I love uh, petroleum jelly or petrolatum style products for my lips. As you guys know, I use the Vanapply almost every single night. I've started actually rotating in the CeraVe healing ointment, which I also love. But during the day, if I want to feel like pretty or I want to have a little bit of a more luxurious experience with my lips, I always go for the bomb.coms. I have them in mango, berry, cherry, and now the wild fig. This one is definitely my favorite so far, to be 100% honest with you. I love cherry and berry for sure. I'll repurchase those. I don't love the mango and it's also clear, so I don't feel that cool when I use it. This one's definitely my favorite. It's the prettiest packaging. I definitely would recommend picking it up before they're out of stock. And I'm not really sure when they're gonna stop selling this either, so. All right, a flock that I talked about in a video where I was doing a haul of ColourPop and Sephora products that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this and I feel like I know why now. And that is the Soul Body Face and Body Bronzing Balm. 
I got this because a lot of people were saying that it is a dupe for the Sol de Chanel. Uh, their bronzing butter bomb circle. I'll put a picture up of it. You know what I'm talking about. And in terms of uh, feel, I would say it probably is, but it's just way too thick for me. And this honestly, honestly, I have to be honest with you. The smell, the smell is the reason that I cannot and do not use this product. So here's a swatch of the shade medium, which is the color I got. I think medium is definitely the right tone for me. This is like a very pigmented swatch and it does blend out very nicely. Um, the problem is just that it's a little too thick for me. In the video, you can see at the very end that it's starting to kind of pill and break apart on my face. I'll leave a little clip of that in here as well. And the smell just lingers. It just lingers the whole time you're wearing it. It smells like a pina colada, like literally it smells like a pina colada. And as I've gotten into uh, fragrance-free skincare, I just can't stand smells that are really strong anymore, especially if it's gonna be on my face all day long. So I know it's nearly impossible to find makeup that is fragrance-free at this point, which I, I understand. Like I'm not gonna stop wearing makeup because of that, but in an effort to try and save parts of my skin and the sensitivity that I deal with, I'm gonna try and not use products that are so heavily fragranced. Like for example, you know, Too Faced has all their like peach stuff. It's just not for me. It smells so strong and I just didn't really like the way it performed, which is really unfortunate because it is a huge thing. Like I'm, I don't wanna throw it away. Maybe I'll give it to a friend. It's really unfortunate. Let's talk about a makeup win that uh, I've also talked about on the channel a couple times at this point, and that is the Kosas 10 Second Eyeshadow in the color Copper Halo. I've talked about this a few times. I don't know if I've actually shown you guys me applying it or anything like that. So if you're curious about a tutorial or anything like that, let me know. I'm happy to do that. I am wearing it on my eyes today. I just kind of touched it up a little bit. And I plan on buying another one of these during the Sephora sale, which is happening now. I'm probably gonna get uh, the gold color. So at first when I got this, I didn't love it because I was not shaking it up nearly enough. When you don't shake it up, the product actually uh, separates between like these two colors. One that's like a really dark orange base and then the top of it is just sort of the shimmer that goes along with it. And it ends up becoming like this watery mess. Once you shake it up and you mix those two sides of the product, it becomes this beautiful copper color. And I will say it is incredibly liquidy. I mean, this is the most liquidy product I've ever used. You literally have to blend it out in 10 seconds or less. So I'll give you a swatch here. It's so incredibly pigmented and a little goes such a long way. It's, it's really a nice color as well. So this is the color Copper Halo. It's shimmery, but not too shimmery. It's a little bit glittery, but not too much. It just, it's a really nice everyday color. And if this is a little dark for you, a little much for you, they have a couple shades lighter than that. And they also have a few bold colors. This is really a tap and out the door type of shade, which is something that I love. And it really gives you that dimension to make it look like you've done a little something with your face in the morning that people are not going to know that it took you literally 10 seconds to do. They are a little bit expensive. This is a $28 eyeshadow, but uh, it is a clean at Sephora brand. I think Kosas is really innovative. I like to see what they're coming out with. I just really, really like it. If you do buy this, make sure you shake it up for like, like shake it for maybe like 10 to 15 seconds at least or else you're gonna have that separation and it's just not gonna work as well. Okay, let's talk about another flop and I don't even have it because I returned it and that is the Kristen S. Brunette Dry Shampoo. I talked about this in my Target haul for fall video, which it seems that you guys are really liking, which I love because I had so much fun filming that. I'm not like a huge fashion person, but I do like to pick out staple items that I feel like will last over multiple years and multiple seasons. So I'm glad you guys liked that video. In it, I talked about the dry shampoo from Kristen S. It's brunette and I realize now I will never purchase a dry shampoo made for brunettes because Truly, the stuff was everywhere. Like, my fingers looked brown. I felt like my wedding ring was kind of dingy. 
when I was like rubbing it in my hair, it just felt like I was gonna get it on my clothes, on my skin. I just didn't really like it. And on top of the fact that I felt like there was brown gunk everywhere, it was not the style of dry shampoo that I like to go for. I prefer to use dry shampoo that makes your hair feel really clean. I know some people prefer to use dry shampoos that makes it feel a little gritty, a little volumized, especially if you have curly hair or if you've been curling it or using heat tools on it. But for the most part, I like to straighten my hair, keep it looking clean, and then if I wanna go in with like a texturizing product to add some volume, I can do that. But I like to have my roots looking really clean and feeling really clean as if I just showered. And that is the type of dry shampoo that is like really gritty. And I don't know, I felt like it didn't really soak up the grease. It just kind of gave me some volume and then added a bunch of brown gunk. It just, I didn't like it at all. I did go ahead and buy the powder version of her dry shampoo and I have been using it for a couple days. So I can't really say whether or not I like it. I think I do, but honestly, Batiste has just, been doing me right for so long that I don't know if I'm ever gonna find anything that I like more except for like dry bar and living proof which are very expensive and I don't want to spend 25 bucks every time I want to get a dry shampoo so I may just be a Batiste girl for life. Okay another huge win that I've definitely talked about a few times now I just uh, talked about it when I was packing for going up to Chicago to visit family. I can link that video up above, but I'm talking about the Glow Recipe Lip Pop Duo that just came out on Sephora for their winter collection. You have to buy these. I have never been so passionate about products like these in my life. I don't know why. I am absolutely addicted to them, like truly addicted. So uh, Glow Recipe, first of all, I'm not like a huge fan of their skincare because it is really fragrance, but I do think that they have some good products. I know that James Welsh likes their stuff a lot. And to be honest, like their stuff does smell really, really good. I'm not gonna lie. And I'm not super anti-fragrance. Like obviously I use it in my, my makeup and I just try and stay away from it in my skincare where I can. This is an AHA kind of like lip exfoliator slash lip treatment slash balm slash it has a little color in it as well. It just does a lot. And it is a really unique consistency. But I'm gonna be honest with you, like I definitely bought these for the smell. I have never tried something that has smelled so much like the candy that you would eat as a kid in my life. Like they have got the smell down and it's not too strong. It lingers a little bit on your lips, but not too long. It's so enjoyable to put on because the packaging is so adorable. And so originally they only had the watermelon lip pop here, the pink one. And then for the holidays, they came out with a limited edition blueberry one and it smells just as good. It also is unique because the watermelon one leaves a little bit of a pink stain and the blueberry one leaves a little bit of like a plum stain, like a berry stain. They're amazing. I really, really highly recommend them. They're $28. I use them like during the day for no makeup makeup looks. I feel like they wear really well under masks because they just kind of give your lips a little stain. I just love them. But if you don't like fragrance products on your lips, you're definitely gonna not like these, but at least go smell them at Sephora or something. Oh, they're amazing. I just fully zoned out for like 10 minutes watching TikToks and was like, oh yeah, I'm filming a YouTube video. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go through another fail. I got a lot of fails in this video. I spent a lot of money on this one too. This is the Becca Aqua Luminous Perfecting Concealer. People really like this and I don't know why. The funny thing about this is that um, people with dry skin really, really like this. And this is one of the more drying concealers that I've used. So I don't know if it's my tretinoin skin or what, but this just sat on my skin and never really sunk in. I have the color light. I think it's just too light for me, to be honest. It, maybe it's a good winter shade, but I was on the lookout for a really nice hydrating concealer because I just felt that all of mine were looking really heavy under my eyes. And I found that in the Tarte Hydro Sealer, which is my absolute favorite concealer. I have a ton of videos of me uh, using it on this channel, but I just don't like this. Maybe it's because I got the wrong color, but it just feels kind of dry. And I like to use my concealer in other areas of my face as well. So if I'm wanting a really light coverage look, I'll use it under my eyes, around my nose and on my chin. And when I do that with this, it just kind of sits and 
It makes my nose area look really dry. I don't know, if you like this, tell me how you use it or if I should use it on blemishes instead. I'm gonna continue to use it because it was really expensive and I wanna go ahead and go through it, but I find myself like having to force myself to use it instead of wanting to use it, which is never fun with a makeup product. So it's not my favorite. Tarte Hydro Sealer is still my number one. Tell me if you like this down below. All right, the last thing we talk about today is going to be an absolute favorite, and that is the Sephora <laughs> Bright Future Color Corrector in the shade Melon. So I talked about this also in that video where I did a Sephora and ColourPop haul, and I am obsessed with this. And it makes me really wanna try this foundation and concealer line as well. Actually, I don't know if there's a foundation line, it might just be concealers. This is potent, okay? so. This is in the color Melon, which I like to have a uh, melon color under my eyes before I go in with my concealer because I have incredibly dark, sallow under eyes because my family's Croatian and that's just what we look like. So this is the shade in Melon. I do have a video of me putting it on. I can link that uh, down below. It is the perfect shade if you are of a medium to light medium skin tone and you have that like sallow blue under eye, it's perfect. And if you like the um, pixie under eye corrector, this is amazing. You'll love it just as much. I do like the pixie one a lot. I just find that it's a little bit thick and if I can minimize the thickness of the layers that I'm using under my eyes, I'll do it. And you really do not need a lot of this for it to go a really long way. I dot just a little bit under my eyes. It covers completely, even with a light coverage concealer like my Hydro Sealer, and I just absolutely love it. It doesn't add to any cakiness. It sets beautifully with a powder. This has become my new favorite. I don't know if I'm gonna go back to the Pixie one, honestly, because this is light, it's easy, it works, it's potent, it's high coverage, and it's the perfect color for my skin tone. I can't believe we're already in November of 2020. It's already hit daylight savings time here, and I live on the cusp of central time, so it gets dark at 4.51 now in Tennessee, which is, absolutely insane so let me know down below some ways that you're going to keep yourself motivated this winter to work out to eat healthy whatever it is that you like to do let me know down below because i think we all need to keep each other accountable as we head into these colder, darker months while we're dealing with the pandemic. We've got some great videos coming up, you guys. We're gonna talk about some trending tags. We're gonna talk, of course, more about skincare, and I can't wait to see you then.